how's it going? Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thanks for joining me today. As you can see, the 2014 Chevrolet Cruze LS is back in our possession, finally, for the front brake <laughs> pad and rotor replacements. Um, if you have been watching the channel for a while, you remember this car uh, from a few months ago. Well, a little more than a few months. It's, uh, I think, uh, around October, September or, or October of last year is when we last saw the car on the channel. And uh, it's actually my dad's car. Uh, he had just actually gotten it. Uh, crap, I forget when he got it now. But back in September, it really he didn't have it for too, too long, maybe a few months. And it developed a really bad oil leak, which, uh, as predicted, I was right. It was the oil... Uh, cooler assembly which is where the the oil filter is also housed on these 1.8 liter engines and uh, he did have it fixed um, at an independent dealership who also kind of suckered him into a valve cover gasket now I'm not gonna get into that but um, well I might I might tell you guys exactly what happened but nonetheless it is not leaking oil anymore it's actually been in pretty good condition but these front brakes have got to go um, they are pulsing really bad it's actually one of the worst that i've had in a while in my possession so we are going to do that today and uh as far as weather because you know i'm always giving a weather report during my vlogs <laughs> it's actually fairly decent right now they did say there was a chance of rain but we're in the mid 70s it's it is pretty humid but there's a breeze going on and there's no sun so that is honestly um ideal working conditions for me anyway because uh, I don't really like being in the sun when I'm doing uh, any kind of real car job like this. Um, so let's go ahead and get the, uh, the puny jack, get it off the ground, and uh, get the one wheel off here. We'll, we'll start here and uh, take a look at what we've got. I don't know how much longer this thing's gonna last, man. It's as high as it goes, and. It's all twisty for some reason. I don't really know what's going on with that. It's, it's like a 12 year old jack that I bought for like under a hundred dollars. But we got the uh, we got the backup. It's enough to. Oh nope, she's back on the ground already. <laughs> Jeez, maybe we won't be able to use this jack. She's, she's not in good shape. But anyway, uh, I'm probably going to try to reposition that. So the thing with the whole oil situation, um, you know, you guys saw we, we made a pretty extensive video about it. And we, um, you know, hosed everything down underneath, kind of degreased everything. And we tried to, you know, trace where the uh, oil was coming from. And, uh, you know, as predicted, my thought was for sure it was the oil cooler assembly. Um, when the car was running, oil was just pouring down, you know, the, the pan. And um, these things are also known for that gasket going bad pretty uh, frequently. So the uh, thing that had happened was, you know, I can't fix it here because the exhaust on this thing is really rusty. I don't have the stuff here to try to really mess with exhaust bolts and stuff. So it would have just been probably a bad time something bad would have happened and the car could have been stuck here so uh, my dad took it to an independent shop they diagnosed it as the valve cover gasket and in the video you know we did see that it looked like there was a little bit of seepage coming from the valve cover gasket um, not enough at this point in time to really be concerned about the valve cover gasket um, even if, that, if it were the valve cover gasket leaking that badly, we would have definitely seen it start to run or pour out from obviously where the, the gasket meets the, the head. And so, I don't know, they told my dad that yes, it's a valve cover gasket, that's gonna fix it. And like a day later, after the job was done, sure enough, the oil is, is all over the driveway again. Uh, so my dad took it back, and uh, this time they were like, oh yeah, it is the uh, oil cooler gasket that's leaking. So, my dad said it is what it is. 
Um, but I, I wasn't too happy at the fact that they, um, they got him to buy the valve cover gasket, thinking, promising that that was the, the case, that that was going to fix it. And that valve cover gasket was, it was a little moist. It was definitely not running down the block or anything. Uh, it was not bad enough. That's something that could have waited to do. I knew for a fact it was the cooler gasket and yeah, he paid a, a whole lot of money for both jobs to get done. Uh, yeah, let me let me reposition this jack real quick. Well guys, I think that's it for this thing. I, I think it's I think it's done. I think she's finally done with me. Um <laughs> It uh, actually got stuck under the car. It won't go down any further. I had to kind of wedge it up from the back to uh, get it out from the pinch weld here, and uh, it will not go back down. And it's it's bent really weird for some reason. I think I think she's done. Uh, I I don't know what's what the deal is with this. Goes up. Actually goes up pretty far when there's like you know nothing on it. And uh <laughs> it won't go down all the way. Oh, it's up against the thing. Yeah, it got bent at some point. I don't know what I was doing the last time, but yeah, it's it's bent ish. She's, she's, she's not happy. I don't know if I can get one more use out of this thing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call it quits with the jack. She's too bent now. Now, well, it was a good jack. We had a lot of t good times together. <laughs> she got me through a lot of uh home automotive stuff man so uh, I'm actually kind of sad but I knew it was going kind of you know failing anyway it wasn't going up as high as it used to under a load and I figured the day was gonna come where it was gonna quit working but didn't really expect it to get all bent which is really weird um, so yeah I think we're just going to uh, say goodbye uh, to the the puny red jack I'm really sad. Well, folks, it looks like we have to revert to the actual scissor jack that was in the trunk. Nobody is a fan of the scissor jack. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, let's get the car back up again. That's a real, only real good advantage of that thing right now is I could use, could use that to impact to get that uh, up. <sighs> yeah, we all hate those things. All right, got that off. Hey Tempest, what's up, honey? You do a brake job with me? Hi. Right. Gets the job done. Ooh, yeah, those look bad. Those look, those look awful. Oh, so much pitting. Ooh, yeah, those have been getting hot a while. Yeah, I put these on, you know, and even just putting them on, they tore. And these are the worst gloves I ever bought. So, 
I already know I'm gonna get through like a couple of turns of the ratchet on the caliper and then uh, I'm just gonna work without the gloves I know it so now we're gonna figure out what size our caliper bolts are I'm not sure what the smallest one I brought up was Oh, smaller than that those are small Oh, I don't think I brought anything up that small darn look I brought all those up it's probably none of those all right, back down to the basement. All right, folks, they appear to be a 10. I was not expecting a caliper bolt that small, especially on the fronts. Usually they're like 12 or 13, or depending on the size of the car, but I really was not expecting it to be a 10. Of course, this hose is in the way. There's the tear, because my hand finger just went right into that corner. All right, caliper bolts are out. I didn't bring a, am I bleeding? Ah, oh, darn it, we broke, we broke blood. Let's see if we can get this out of here. big piston wow of course I don't have a I didn't bring it I didn't bring anything home I totally forgot I was supposed to do this today so I did not bring anything home I think the pads really weren't too bad looking but these rovers are god awful all right I might have to go fetch a piece of wire or something downstairs and tie tie this up to get out of the way because that hose is not very long. And like I said, we're just going to forget the gloves now. <laughs> Alright, so I got some wire hanging up our caliper there. Getting it out of the way. And these are 18s back here. I got the one loose pretty good. This one's got to be a little looser, I suppose. Lots of cleaning to do. Yeah, you bet that boy seized on there, and of course. Mm. All right, rotor number one is off. Don't forget about the screw that goes through the rotor. It's a T27, possibly a T30, but that 27 worked. And even after I got that screw out, you can see I really had the beat. <laughs> meat on the rotor to get it off um, yeah those are pretty bad looking um, actually went to the basement used this to kind of pry off here to get the you know pry the rotor off at some point and that was also my hammer because for some reason my really good hammer is missing um, the hammer the, the metal hammer I would use for this stuff I was going to use this, but this is going to break, and it's nearly, not nearly strong enough. So this seemed to have worked for now. Um, so now what I'm going to do is uh, whew, we have our brush in the Aztec bag, and we're going to try to clean that up. It's definitely not all going to clean up here at the house. Um, you need like an air tool that you know has like a, a nice little uh, brush on it to kind of get in everywhere. But... We'll at least try it with the um, with the brush, and then we'll go over to the porch, and um, we will clean up our bracket, put our new hardware on, and such, and uh, we will go from there. All right, folks, here we are at the porch. Um, so I opened up the box of new pads, which we just got some CarQuest uh, semi-metallic. Not the best, but not the worst either. It's they're in the middle. My dad didn't want the best because he's older now and he just doesn't drive as often as he used to so but we got no hardware unfortunately 
I hate it when uh, we buy new brakes and you don't get new hardware with the pads. So that means we have to reuse these existing ones and that's gonna kinda suck. So we're gonna take our brush. I wish I had a vise here at home. But we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna try to clean off all of the, the crud off of the hardware that's on here. It's actually peeling off quite nicely for the most part. <laughs> I didn't even try to do that, but it's like a makeshift vice. <laughs> yeah, that really, yeah, that didn't clean up too bad, I'm kind of surprised. They're not going to be perfect, but yeah, those cleaned up a lot better than I thought. Carefully take our, our screwdriver or our flat prying apparatus, kind of pry them off of there. And I'll need both hands, but we'll try to clean up the back. And we're definitely going to clean this to the best of our abilities. There again, there's only so much that we can really do with this at home, unless you have some sort of power tools. And again, all my stuff is kind of at work still. So I'll work on this, and uh, I'll work on the other side. I'm kind of speeding this up a little bit too, because the battery on this camera is just not lasting as long as it used to. So even though it was fully charged, I'm already down to about half life, so I want to make sure we have time to, you know, obviously do the other side. But let's finish cleaning up this, bra uh, this bracket here and move on. Alright, so here's our, our first clip. I cleaned off the back. That, won't, that little thing there won't come off, but that's not really going to bother anything. But it looks like we got most of our actual mating surfaces all good. Um, we've got a little bit of this brake lubricant that we're gonna apply to what I was able to, you know, scrape off of this, this bracket here. So we're just going to put a little bit of that on here um, before we put the hardware back on. And theoretically, it's supposed to kind of keep this from sticking um, long term, and it's also supposed to kind of keep this from getting further rust buildup. But there again, like I said, I can only, I can only scrape so much of it off. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not going to be, um, be perfect, but it is a little better than what it was. So, we'll, um, is this the green stuff? It is the green stuff. I'll just dab this here. Oh, didn't mean to put that much. Uh, don't have a brush, so we'll just smear it around a little bit. best we can and of course we tweaked it a little bit because of the fact that you know we were pulling it off but unfortunately we don't really have a choice because we have to reuse those so that's pretty much that I'll we'll get to this uh, other side now hi honey cleaning some brake parts Not interested? Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's our first clean bracket. Again, like I said, you know, we kind of tweaked the uh, hardware, unfortunately, because we got to reuse it. But once the pads go in, it should be okay. So we're going to put the pads in now. That way they're already on. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're just going to apply some of this grease to the ears and then slide them on. So that's basically all I'm going to do. 
obviously we have a rear with the squealer and we have a front with no squealer and before we throw these on let's just do a comparison real quick let's go find one of the old ones that fell off and uh, just kind of compare real quick we'll just set it here and uh, that's a front pad I grabbed so we'll take another front yeah they really these really didn't look bad at all man they're they're pretty close to new unfortunately but those rotors are toast so somebody did like a pad slap and uh, just didn't even bother doing anything with those rotors that obviously needed to go All right, and our new pads are in our cleaned caliber bracket. These actually move really good, so I'm not going to bother, um, you know, doing anything with these. I don't really have enough of this anyway, so I want to use them for the pads. But these are moving, so it's not like they were seized up, surprisingly. So we're good. So let's go put our rotor on and. Uh, finish up this uh, side of the, the vehicle. All right, so we got our new rotor. I did forget uh, that I, I don't have brake clean. Uh, we have to get some of the, you know, machining oils off of here. So, you know, I thought I had brake clean, but apparently I like to keep empty cans around. So we got this instead, it's just auto body cleaner. It'll do the same thing. We're just gonna spray it real quick just to kind of cut the oils off. We're gonna wipe it off with the uh, shop towel there and uh, then we could just throw it on. Don't forget to line up your the hole for the screw. I guess technically this Torx fit doesn't have to go back in, but usually if I can get them out, I'll put them back in. If they break off, I don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure that these are just for assembly purposes, you know, like when the car is being built or something, but I don't think it really matters when they are, you know, already off the line. Um, but. I don't know, just, I guess, to keep it original. And when I do put them back in, if I end up putting them back in like I just did, I don't snug them down 100%. That way, make it easier for the next person if this car lasts that long. And even that next person will probably be me, so I'm just making it easier for me. We've got our beautiful new pads here in our slightly cleaned up caliper bracket. I'll try to do the bottom one first because for some reason I always have a better time. Better luck getting that one in first. There it is. push our pads in now so they don't fall out. And the top one 
comes in now too. That went pretty good by hand already. Okay, those aren't going to go anywhere. So I did buy something new for myself. <laughs> for home, I bought a brake pad and caliper service toolkit. Basically, it's the winder to reset the uh, caliper. Um, since I forgot to bring the one home from work, I don't really feel like uh, going out to work and getting it. So I just bought one because this is something that I wanted to actually keep at the house for a while. I, I sense another brake job in the near future on somebody else's car anyway, so it's good to have. So we're going to wind up the caliper now. Oh, how fun. Oh, it's fun looking at brand new tools. Too bad they don't stay like that forever. Of course, it's just now starting to rain. Should be it right there. Nope, I'm stuck. <laughs> it's definitely a two-handed job, but obviously I'm filming. And voila, so we got our our tens all uh, snug down also. And uh, got a nice free moving caliper there. Yeah, I don't like that. Right. And that's that concludes this side of our uh, Great job, so let's get everything out of the way here for a moment. And uh, let's get our tire back on, move over to the next side. Don't remember offhand, but I'm pretty sure most most GM sedans are about 100 foot-pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So that should be plenty. I was trying to do it slow because the car is rocking and that can affect, you know, your reading if you just really crank down on it. Reminds me of the Aztec days. 
And Mom's Chevy Malibu Classic Days, too. Oh, there. A little too much on that one. We're good. There we go. One side's done. I need to take a break. And uh, then I have to move all this stuff over there. So we'll be back in a bit. And we're back. The rain has stopped again. My little goober. There we go. Huh. I'm so strong. Looks just as bad as the other one. <sighs> All right then. Well, that's funny. These are the I just realized these are the same pads that we're putting on too. This car, it's car quest. I wonder if they're the exact same part number. I want to look. This one looks a little crustier than the last one.
Jeez. Okay, that one's off now. That one was a lot worse to get off. Tried using the WD-40 to kind of get in behind there and through this through the studs and whew, that was that was a tough one. Yes, it was. All right, let's continue.
so we got all cleaned up. Cleaned up all of our tools and stuff. And it's time, oh the battery's dying. It's time to take it out and see, you know, how the brakes feel, you know, compared to how they felt on the way here. Um, so the first thing, obviously, pump the pedal. Oh, there it goes. Never ever, never ever just jump into a car and, uh, you know, put it in gear and such before you actually pump the pedal. All right, let's go. So the best way to get new, hopefully I got time to say all this, the, the best way to get new brakes to seat well is honestly just kind of hitting up every stop sign as you should. Uh, <laughs> you never really want to just get in a car and go fast and then you know hit the brakes real hard and stuff. You don't want to, you know, obviously overheat them. So like we're coming up on another stop sign here and we're just stopping as if we were, you know, we wouldn't do anything. You never really want to just, you know, hammer on some new brakes to, to get them to seat. That's kind of improper. I don't hear any weird noises and I definitely don't feel any pulsing. So that issue is gone. He did want, you know, was thinking maybe I should check out the back brakes. Now they are surprisingly drums uh, on this particular model. Um, but um, we're not going to do that today. I don't really think that there's anything wrong with the drum brakes. I don't hear any noises coming from back there when you hit them or anything. Um, oh, these, these feel so much better. So much better than the other ones. So, oh. There. So... So I, I think we're just going to end this vlog, uh, you know, here in a bit. Um, the brakes feel great, and uh, yeah, there's really not a whole lot else to it. Um, hopefully, maybe this video kind of helped you a little bit if you're changing the brakes on your cruise for like the first time or something. Um, I will say this may be the first video that I actually do it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to start putting a disclaimer, I think, at the beginning of every vlog from now on. Uh, because I'm getting kind of tired of, of getting people who are upset that my vlogs are too lengthy and I talk too much and I don't get straight to the repair right away and stuff. Guys, this is not a how-to video. I don't, I, I've already kind of made a video about this. These are not how-to videos. These are me, these are videos of me documenting ownership or various repair processes with you know family cars and such it's these aren't necessarily made to be how to's um, but you know if you want to use it as a how to by all means go ahead um, not everything that I do is by the book so keep that in mind um, but it's documenting how that how I take care of things and such uh, so I really don't want to hear it anymore people you know people saying that this the video is useless and it's putting me to sleep and it really wasn't helpful because it's a crappy how-to video. These are not how-to videos, guys. And just like that, we're back inside because the battery died. So yeah, not a how-to video. These videos document just the overall ownership life of the vehicles that I have and the repairs that I decide to do to them and some other cars. So, don't take them so seriously. Uh, that's it. So, the Chevy Cruze brakes are, like, top-notch now. And uh, that is all that I've got for today. Um, I can say probably sometime in the near future there will be a valve cover video. Valve cover gasket video, rather, on uh, a vehicle. I'm not going to tell you which one it is but it's probably going to be pretty extensive from the looks of it. Uh, so that's coming up in the uh, sometime here in the future. And there may possibly be another brake job on another vehicle also. Don't know when that's happening, but I'm sure it's coming. If you did enjoy this, thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much again for watching. Take care.